Welcome to the Professional Website Investors Podcast, the show where we talk about what it takes to successfully buy, operate, scale, and sell a thriving e-commerce business. When it comes to doing business online, we believe that buying an existing website is far superior to building one from scratch. So if you're a career professional who is looking to become an e-commerce store owner, listening to this show will give you the knowledge, tools, and community support you need to be successful. I'm your host, Ryan Cowden, and this week we're joined by Ian Bond from ProfessionalWebsiteInvestors.com. In this episode of the Professional Website Investor Podcast, Ian and I discuss how to design an online experience that converts users into loyal customers. It's a crowded marketplace out there. The internet is full of websites offering what you offer, and the amount of choices can be elating and overwhelming to online shoppers. Just getting people away from Amazon to your store is a small victory. So how will you get them to stay? In the constant shuffle of online advertising and marketing, why will people choose your store over another? One of the best ways to find and retain customers is the attention you give them, the service they receive, and the experience they have when they interact with you and your brand. So how do you create that experience for your customers? How do you design a user experience that creates loyalty in a highly competitive market? On this episode, you'll hear an overarching philosophy to guide your customer service. This includes Ian's advice to be helpful through providing great content and to be everywhere by providing multiple ways for customers to see your product. Next, we'll discuss some helpful content that will create a happy customer experience, including a strong About Us page and publishing product guides for your users. Then, we'll talk about some excellent customer support advice for your virtual assistants, including how to use emails and templates to structure client interactions. After that, Ian shares some advice on how to keep customer interactions positive, which is to focus on the question being asked and to communicate your effort to resolve the problem. And finally, we'll share some problem-solving techniques for times when customers aren't happy, which include providing discounts and working with suppliers to handle returns. If you're ready to improve your customer service experience across your entire platform, then this is one episode you won't want to miss. There's a lot of actionable advice in this episode, so grab something to write with because you're going to want to take notes. As always, I'll be back on the other side to wrap up any loose ends. So without any further ado, here's my conversation with Ian Bond. Okay, Ian, welcome back to the show. How's it it going? Ryan, it's never been better here in the sunny Middle East. Uh, what's it like? Uh, what's it like in sun, uh, you know, I guess sunny Southern California. It's it's pretty sunny. It's uh, it's temperate. Check. You know, um, step outside. It's in the eighties. You know. Oh wow! Kind of boring. Yeah, my daughter. So yeah, my daughter. My daughter. Yeah, my daughter was just <laughs> out in uh, in uh, West Hollywood, I guess, oh, or okay. you know, that area. Yeah, and she had the time of her life. She got back to a, a snowstorm in Washington D.C. So, oh, man. yeah, yeah, we're in our own yeah. world out here. It's <laughs> yeah. So she said, "Dad, that's where I'm moving to." Okay. Yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, for what it's worth, yeah. Well, we have a we have a great topic today. I'm we excited to, to dive into this. Yeah, uh, you're. You're gonna you're 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 gonna press me a little bit. Here. Yeah, some, yeah. Some secrets, some secrets, huh? I want to know your secrets. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> we're talking about customer service, and uh, okay. we want we want customers to have a good experience when they come to our websites. We want them coming back after they interact yep. with our website and with us. Um, yep. But before we dive into the specifics, I'd like to know just kind of is there like an overarching philosophy or idea that you have regarding customer service? Yeah. So the um, the uh, episode's title is "At Your Service: How to Keep Customers Coming Back for More," yeah. and I think there are two count them two uh, <laughs> strategies that we employ generally. Um, and one is to be helpful, and two is to be everywhere. Okay. So we can dive into that. Okay. Great. Um, what does that mean? First of all, just being helpful. What? How would you sure. define that? So we talked in a recent uh, podcast episode of having the best pages on the internet, right? Yeah. And the best pages are the best product page, the best collection page, the best brand page, really get people to buy into the brand. And then I also talked about uh, other content and other content would be things like uh, shopping guides or buyer's guides or installation guides. 
And those last few kind of appeal to people that are, you know, very much at the top of the funnel. And so and they, they rank really well to get people to come to your site. Um, but they also uh, all, uh, uh, are very helpful uh, at capturing people's uh, email addresses. And so, you know, getting people to come to your site, uh, you not only get to cookie them so that you can uh, track them around the Internet, but you can also uh, get their email address. But in terms of being helpful um, in kind of the uh, process of going from being a, a uh, suspect of being one of your clients to being a, a true process, people have to do a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, information gathering. And so you want to be kind of early in the process of helping people gather the information they need. And again, I've given compliments to the people that uh, do uh, Amazon affiliate sites. I think they're quite good at, 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 at helping educate people and help people do comparison shopping. And I think people that do high ticket drop shipping, which is what we do, which is higher price things, kind of a minimum of $500, mm-hmm. average prices above $1,000. Um, and the higher up you go, the more information that needs to be gathered. And so, uh, being helpful is doing that. So it's doing the SEO piece. It's obviously, um, uh, having knowledgeable customer service people, um, that can return phone calls or return emails, um, uh, and give people, you know, kind of the, uh, you know, the frequently asked the answers to frequently asked questions or, you know, uh, quickly contact people and offer to follow up. That is an absolutely a lost art on the internet. People mm-hmm. just don't do that. So we do it. Um, when we get an abandoned cart, uh, which we get a fair number of, uh, we will, you know, respond to people and tell them, you know, it is in stock and ready to ship or it's not in stock. And here are three alternatives. So we try to be helpful mm-hmm. um, uh, doing that. Any way that you can think of to be helpful to the customer, you know, either on the page through the SEO that I mentioned, through the guides, through things like frequently asked questions, those are all things that I would think fall into the bucket of being as helpful as you can, helping people get the information and the advice that they need. Because oftentimes, um, uh, in addition to information, they want to speak to a human being to get advice. What about this versus that kind of a question? And it could be on your site. Matter of fact, I was just going back and forth with one of the guys that, that we work with this morning and someone called up. And of course, we have the answer on, on the site, mm-hmm. but people will, people will dial the number and, uh, and, you know, just because you know, maybe they didn't find it or maybe they just want to hear somebody's voice. Yeah. They're about to spend, they're spend, about to spend a fair amount of money. And as much as we try to make it, uh, something where we don't have to be involved, um, you know, uh, sometimes somebody does have to be home to uh, yeah. in, be involved. And so, yeah, th- those, those are all things that I think fit into the be helpful category. Okay. And, and you've said before that that's part of your business strategy. That's part of how you differentiate yourself. From these big chains, it's kind of yeah, providing that very. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, as we've mentioned before, one of our you know kind of our big focus is on home furnishings. We love things around the house. Mm. Americans are crazy about lots of things, but the home, their home, is one of them. Yeah, you know, try to call, try to call up the guy at Home Depot in aisle three and yeah. get you know <laughs> who has you know, some ridiculous you know array of merchandise and get you know some kind of a. A detailed response. I think that we, I think we can crush the competition. Yeah. Um, you know, being very niche focused in what we do. You know, we are not a superstore. We are doing niche authority, uh, types of sites where we are really experts in what we sell. And it shows because you can't go there and buy, uh, you know, it, it's not, you know, a Sears department store, although they don't exist anymore, but it's not like <laughs> yeah. that. It's not like that. It's not like a, it's not like a Home Depot. It's, okay. you know, they're very focused on specific niches. So okay. we're that, we're that expert. Okay. Gotcha. So that's be helpful. What do you mean by be everywhere? What does that mean? Well, you know, the, there is a statistic and I don't know how uh, accurate this, uh, this is that, you know, uh, for people to purchase, they need to see you and your brand six, seven or eight times. And so they may come to your site, which then allows you, well, they do come to your site. 
And once they come to your site, you have a few opportunities. First of all, you're going to cookie them. Um, secondly, uh, and so you're going to track them around the in internet uh, using uh, uh, retargeting strategies, both on Google and sometimes on Facebook. We will always use Google. Um, Facebook uh, is a little bit less, I think, um, it's a little less, been a little less successful for us. I do think that people spend so much time on Facebook that it makes sense. We try to keep it to you know kind of a minimum, um, but just showing up uh, on Facebook is okay, but we're putting more effort around Google. People are on, you know, we've all, uh, uh, you know, been followed around by Google when we've gone shopping for something. And, you know, as a side note, I never ceases to amaze me how when I go to a competitor's site, I don't get followed around so that there are people that are not doing this. So it's amazing to me yeah. because it's, incre it's incredibly effective. Okay. So <laughs> if you go to it, you go shopping for a site and you don't see them show up in the New York Times or some other web page uh, that you're going to, um, uh, you know, by, with a Google ad. Uh, they're not retargeting you and that, that's a big opportunity. So, uh, yeah. that is one, that's one strategy, the retargeting, uh, strategy. Uh, if you go on site and I just mentioned we have these helpful guides, um, and you give us your email address, now you will be in our email funnel. So we mm -hmm. will be touching, we will be touching you every, you know, we have a set schedule. We will be sending you more information, probably one of the guides, uh, or, or, you know, more information about things that we, that we, uh, know that you have an interest in. And we'll be making you ultimately be making you a, an offer sometime uh, down the line for some kind of a discount. Um, so, you know, we, we, we do use email marketing. Um, so that's a, you know, I think that that's a really good strategy. Okay. Um, the, uh, one of the things that we've, started to develop going back about 18 months ago, which has been quite helpful, is YouTube. YouTube is a phenomenal search engine, second largest uh, search engine in the world. And so now anything that we can do, you know, in video, and we do a, a fair amount of video, um, uh, reviews, uh, product, either product reviews or collection reviews, um, you know, we will post on YouTube. And so you know, we can advertise on YouTube and uh, you can find us on YouTube. And so we try to 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 uh, attract people by 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 using YouTube. I was actually looking at our numbers last night, and things that we posted going back eighteen months ago. It's amazing the number of views that people uh, you know, that we've gotten, and you know, I, I think ultimately that's probably led to some of the the uh, the uh, direct searches that we've had that have converted into sales. Okay, but those are just those are just three yeah. examples of of be everywhere. Okay. Um, you know, we have got a Pinterest strategy. So, you know, for a, a store that, that, that is, uh, we think, uh, uh, it's, it's an, it's an incredible candidate, uh, for Pinterest. So that's a, that's another, you know, kind of a tangent strategy that might be applicable to some people. So be helpful, be everywhere. Um, and I think, you know, that's kind of the one, two punch. Okay. Great. So in terms of specifically things you want to have on your site to help people, um, you mentioned having an FAQ page for frequently asked questions. Um, is there anything else that you think your website should have just to kind of enhance that customer service experience? Yeah, uh, I go back and there's, I think there's a kind of a laundry list of things. There's a checklist of things. Okay. And, you know, there's obviously you want to have a very strong about us page. People do want to know who you are, what your story is, hmm. and, and, um, you know, what is your raison d'etre? Um, that's, you know, very important. I mentioned yeah. that we, for our top selling products, for our top selling suppliers, we want to have the best on the internet pages for their best products, for the best collections, for their be and for our best brands. We want to have those. Yeah. Um, we do want to have that other content that I mentioned, which is things like comparisons within a brand there or within a collection. There may be different styles and we can do a compare and contrast. This one has more storage mm -hmm. than that one. That one has uh you know uh different design feature than than another one things like that um 
so you know we we we, we like to we like to uh, do that the installation guides the buyers guides we'll we compare different brands and what we think they're good for we look for obviously the most search terms and the niche that we're in and then we write content to you know if we think uh, help people make a better decision or to to enlighten them and then that obviously allows us to uh cooking them to the extent that they give us their email address we can we can do email marketing yeah. for them and so um you know it all kind of uh you know works seamlessly together but on page FAQs are awesome yeah. about us page the uh, you know the the best on the internet pages for for your uh products for your collections for your brand um and then you know these guides are 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 wonderful we spend a lot of time doing that and we work very closely with our suppliers on those to make sure that we've captured everything so yeah. and the supply and you know by the way since the suppliers are your lifeblood it's a wonderful opportunity for you to partner with your suppliers and show them that you you know um that you love them and that you appreciate them yeah. and then you know we always take the opportunity to get on to ask to get on their where to buy page, and mm. then that provide that provides us with additional um, uh, you know link that Google will recognize and make our our content and our listings even more relevant. So it's a virtual circle, really. Yeah. Okay. Great. So one of the themes that that you talk a lot about on this podcast is outsourcing work to virtual assistants or virtual employees, and um, I want to know kind of. How do you include your virtual assistants and virtual employees in customer service? Well, you know, as I've said before, you know, we live in a part of the world where we're sleeping when America's shopping. And so our, uh, our, our employees are handling, you know, you know, 90% plus of the customer service related issues. Mm -hmm. um, my wife will often quarterback a, an issue um, that, that, that arises. It may be a question that, uh, that, you know, she uniquely knows the answer to and, and she can provide. It may be um, something that came in late in the shift and we want to respond to it. We can send an email back. Um, we like to do as much communication as we can through email as opposed to phone. Hmm. As a matter of fact, when you call our phone number, we will ask you to email us at support at or sales at whatever the website is. It's very hard to get a hold of people. They often don't answer their phone when they don't recognize the number. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you put something in their inbox, they can look at it at their leisure, which is, I think, really important. So um, we try to be as helpful as we can at you know um, contacting people that way. And since we've templated everything out for our VAs, it's very easy for them to uh, take a template and and um, an engineer and construct a response for people on something that would be kind of normal uh, inquiry that we would get. So we use the our VAs to do all of our customer service. We do have someone now that we call a sales manager, and that allows our VAs to say, we're going to have a sales manager call you because that's a technical question that I think that he can answer better. And okay. so... Uh, we're, we're especially uh, employing this as we move from the thousand twelve hundred dollar average price point to thirty five hundred to five thousand dollar average price point, especially where things become more um, very high end retail and B two B. And so, um, when you get into that realm, you need to have a, another another level of of sophistication. I think. In the, in the advice that you provide and, uh, you know, without being sexist, oftentimes a male voice. Okay. Okay. Um, so when you, uh, when you train your employees for how to handle the customers, um, one of the things that's important is you want to keep all the interactions positive, you know, but, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to keep all the interactions positive, but sometimes when people reach out for customer service, it's not, they're not in a great mood all the time, you know? Um, so what, what kind of things do you tell your VAs to, to keep the interaction positive? I think, you know, we face this every day. So it's a great question. And, and, uh, and the reality is, you know, my, I've heard my, I've heard my wife say this once. I've heard her say that, you know, a thousand, 10,000 times. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is to really try to 
read what the question is that's being asked and address the question. Hmm. So often, so often, particularly with VAs, so often there is a, I don't know, a, a, a general, um, uh, you know, kind of a general approach where, you know, they don't really address the question. They don't really further the, 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 the issue in the, the mind of the client. And nothing is more frustrating for someone who's reached out to customer service to find out about something, particularly if they've already ordered and not get the answer they're looking for. It's better to say that we're checking and we're coming back than to offer what is really not a, an answer, a non-answer. And okay. so the first thing we do is try to really, you know, coach people to, to get to the real crux of the question and address it. And there's, there's no shame in saying that I don't know the answer. Um, we'll have to, uh, maybe come, come back to them with an answer. That's, that's not a problem, but there it's, it's a horrible experience for someone to, to get what is a non-answer that doesn't look like you're going to follow up on it anymore. And so, you know, that's horrible. Now, the question you didn't ask, which is what happens when something goes wrong, (laughs) that's a whole, that's a whole other remediation, um, you know, kind of conversation and how do we remediate things? You know, we, yeah. we do the best we can and there are several strategies to do that. But I think the, the, the intention of your question was how do you, how do you, you know, try to stay on the positive side before you yeah. get there? And that's okay. And, and the best way to do that is to answer the, the questions, um, that people have as completely as you can. We have all kinds of resources available. Uh, I just mentioned a situation where okay. the answer was literally on our website. So, you know, hmm. we, we keep, we keep track of all the frequently asked questions. We have those resources. We have those answers and we have templates for people to either respond in email or to, you know, return the phone call if it's a phone call. Okay. Cool. Well, you hinted at, at what my next question is going to be, which is the, re- <laughs> the remediation piece. So. What is yeah. what does that look like when there really is a, a problem that you have to step in and, and solve? So the practical the practical piece of remediation is that what has happened is there may there you know uh, the customer may have received something and more than likely um, there might be some damage or there might be some. Um, Something that doesn't necessarily, you know, fit perfectly their their expectations. Yeah. Now, since and I'll just use uh, you know uh, our our largest store where all of the the great bulk of the 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 suppliers bring uh, goods into the port of Los Angeles, and these things ship, and seventy five plus percent of the country lives, you know, in the central and uh, midwestern time zones. So we've shipped it already across the country. It's opened up and it doesn't meet the customer's expectation. So literally the best option that you have is to provide them with some kind of a discount so that they do not return it um, because they've already stated to you it doesn't meet their expectations. This is not a, a, um, a situation where someone has uh, by choice decided that they, you know, they don't want it. It's, this is not buyer's remorse. This is something that's fallen short of their expectations. And you, you know, you, you, you clearly have some culpability. The best thing you could do is try to figure out how you can do a trade where you can, you know, uh, maybe discount, uh, discount it for them. Um, if there is a situation where we can get the supplier to chip in for that, we're always working with the suppliers. Um, you know, that happens if there's some kind of a minor chip or some kind of a, a, a defect. Uh, we'll get the suppliers to contribute to that. We'll contribute to it, but it's uh, normally a heck of a lot cheaper than shipping it back across the country and then getting it restocked. And since, you know, the way that suppliers accept things is only in the original packaging, it can be very challenging to send things back to suppliers. Okay. So. Uh, you know, one of the good things about running a high volume business is that this is a very low percentage of, you know, the norm, the orders that we, that we process, uh, uh, on a monthly basis. You know, some months we go without any. 
And, uh, but we've had to learn that the first thing you want to do is try and cut a deal and move on with your life. Okay. okay. Right. Right. Um, all right. So, so to kind of sum it up, what's kind of your, um, kind of just overarching approach to making sure that the customer has a good experience with your website? Yeah, I, I think it goes back to, um, you know, providing the best, uh, and most helpful, um, information and advice that you can. And, um, you can do that through lots of different ways, uh, trying to track them to come back, trying to send them targeted things. Um, and then, you know, I have said that, you know, we really exist because we provide, uh, an excellent upfront experience with information and advice. And then because we're in, in, uh, in home furnishings, a lot of things we're doing home furnishings there and we're, uh, you know, shipping big bulky things and there's an expectation a lot of times that there's a, a window that needs to be, uh, in, uh, installation window because it might be part of a, a, a remodeling project is, you know, the, the shipping logistics. So we spend a lot of time providing people with follow up on the shipping logistics. And we li- literally, depending on what's going on, have multi touch points during that process. And that makes us unique, uh, in, in, in the niches that we operate in against the big box guys and even against the online only internet retailers. They just don't spend the time doing it. Mm-hmm. So we think, we think if we're kind of put ourselves in the minds of the customers and what are they concerned about, um, we think that that gives us a leg up because we're thinking, you know, like, uh, trusted authorities in a very narrow niche, and we have the luxury to kind of put our put ourselves in the shoes of uh, of our customers, and you know maybe presume what they might ask next. Okay, Ian, that was really helpful. Um, thank you so much, um, and I guess we'll see you next week on another episode. My my pleasure, yeah. and thank you so much for your time today, Ryan. It's uh, great to reconnect. Yeah, same here. All right, Thanks. see ya. All right, folks, there you have it. That wraps up my conversation with Ian Bond of Professional Website Investors. He shared a ton of valuable insights and advice today on how to provide an amazing customer experience to turn users into loyal customers. We also shared some tools and resources, which will all be linked up in the show notes at professionalwebsiteinvestors.com. I hope you enjoyed our conversation. Please consider subscribing, sharing with a friend, or leaving us a review in your favorite podcast directory. Until next time, best of luck in all that you do, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Professional Website Investor Podcast.